In this one, I'll explain what Simlink, Hardlink, and Junction Points are in Windows, how to create them with and without the terminal, and demonstrate some real-world use case examples. You're probably familiar with shortcuts in Windows, a file or folder that simply links back to the original file. And when you delete the original file, the shortcut is broken. Applications in Windows like our clone will not see this readme.md as a markdown file, but rather a link describing where that file actually is on the system. Sim links or symbolic links behave similarly to shortcuts, except applications treat them as if they really exist at their location. Here I've got a shortcut to the untitled new folder on my desktop, and here is a sim link to that folder. Clicking on the shortcut just takes Explorer to the desktop inside of this folder, untitled new folder. However, if I click on the sim link and look at the address bar, we notice I'm now located in a folder called untitled new folder on my USB drive. File Explorer now thinks that this folder on my desktop exists on my USB drive. Any changes that I make inside of this folder will be reflected in the original folder and files. Add update and delete contents inside the sim link and they take effect immediately in the original location because to windows you really are modifying the contents in this folder if you delete the sim link the original source file or folder will still exist but like with shortcuts if you remove the original file or folder the sim link breaks Sim links will also break if you rename the original file or folder. To create a symbolic link in Windows, you'll first need to open the terminal with administrator privileges. If you're in PowerShell, you'll want to enter CMD to run the command prompt. If you have developer mode enabled, you can create sim links without being an administrator. To enable developer mode, go to your settings. Just type in developer. Go to use developer features and enable dev mode. Next, enter mklink. This is the make link command in command prompt. If you want to make a sim link to a folder, enter the option slash d for directory. I want to make a sim link to stuff on my desktop back into my USB drive. So I'll put f stuff and then the source location stuff on my desktop we see symbolic link created now if i go to my f drive we've got a folder called stuff with all of its contents to make a same link for a file you simply omit the d option i'll make a same link to this image on the f drive We look into stuff on the F drive, we've got that image. And notice I've changed the name of the sim link, but it still opens up the original file. Sim links are useful when you want to keep a file or folder in one location or have its contents accessible and modifiable across different areas of your computer. Consider this. I used the note-taking application Obsidian for jotting down notes. I've got two folders of notes, each with a dot .obsidian folder which stores settings, themes, and extensions. However, I want all my notes to share the exact same settings. And since Obsidian doesn't have an option to set the location of these dot Obsidian folders, I can use sim links to create a centralized Obsidian folder that each folder of notes can access. First, let me go ahead and close both of these. And first, what I would do is go down to notes two and I'll copy this folder directly at the root of my F drive. Then I can go into the other folder and just delete that one. Now I've just got one Obsidian folder. I'll create a symbolic link for this folder inside of each of my notes folder. Got the first one made inside of notes one. Second one in notes two. I can open Obsidian and now both of my notes 
have the same exact settings. When I make changes to something like my theme here, it'll be reflected in my other notes. Because to Obsidian, each of these folders look like the real thing. It'll treat all the files like it would the original location. Let's talk about heart links. Heart links are similar to symlinks, but they only work on files. You can think of heart links as a form of deduplication in Windows. That is, when you create a heart link, you appear to create an exact copy of the file, but Windows just sees it as a reference point to the actual data on the hard drive. To demonstrate, here I've got a readme.md in my documents folder, and I have one on my desktop. These are actually the same exact files. If I open them up in VS Code, we can see they have the same content. But to prove this, and I have autosave enabled just so you can see, what I'll do is modify one of these copies. It's saved. And watch what happens when I click on this window. It updates immediately. We see the path here to the desktop and the path here to my documents. You can rename, modify, and even delete a copy, and it doesn't matter. So long as you still have one copy on the hard drive, the file in this data will still exist. Let's go ahead and recreate that hard link back into documents. Back in command prompt, we'll use the same MK link, but with the H option for hard link. We'll set our target location, documents, and I'll call it the same file name. And our source is going to be this file on the desktop. Hard link created. And I've got the file back in documents. Now there are some limitations with hard links in that they can't be copied across different partitions or drive. If I try to make the hard link on my USB drive of this file, yeah, it changed letters again. Now it's drive D. Do that again, drive D. We get an error that says system cannot move file to a different disk. So hard links can only be made on the same drive that the original file is on. One use case example for using hard links is simply to just have multiple copies of a file on your hard drive without all the copies taking up space. And again, applications will treat each copy like they exist in whatever location that they're in. One thing to note about hard links is that you don't need to be an administrator to create them. Let's look at junction points. Junction points or junctions behave nearly identically to symlinks, except they only work on folders. Here I've got a junction point on my USB drive of stuff that's on my desktop. If I click into stuff, just like with symlinks, it opens F stuff because Explorer thinks that this folder exists on the USB drive. Junction points are more compatible with older, decades old programs, and they don't require administrative privileges, just like with hard links. Let me go ahead and delete this and show you how to create a junction point. Again, we'll be using the same MK link command, except this time we'll be using the J option for junction point. Set our target location, our source, and then make link. And we've got our junction point. Now, there are some limitations with junction points. They can only be made on NTFS formatted hard drives and you cannot create junctions for network folders. Junction points are quite useful when you want to offload important data off your C drive to an external drive, for example. Consider this. In my app data folder, I'll go to Roaming, Mozilla, Firefox, and I've got a profile here that I'd like to move off my main drive and onto my USB. The first thing I would do is just copy my profile onto the drive And while that's doing that, I'll go ahead and close my browser. And I'll actually go ahead and delete the profile in my app data folder. And if I try to open up Firefox, I get this error saying it cannot find the profile. Side of command prompt, I'll just do make link to my app data folder and profiles. And just call the folder the same name as it is on my USB drive. And the source is going to be the profile from the USB. Junction point is made. I can see it here on in my app data folder. And now 
when I open up Firefox, nothing changes. It still thinks that those files exist in the app data folder. You could save quite a bit of space on your main boot drive using junction points in this way. Creating symlink junction points and hard links in terminal is rather archaic and tedious. So to make things easier, you can use the link shell extension by Herman, this last name. This is a free utility that lets you create symlink junction points and hard links in the Windows context menu. Go ahead and download it, install, restart Explorer, and now what you can do is right click a folder or a file, in this case a folder, you should see pick link source. Then go to the location where you want to copy the link. Place it on my USB drive, right click, and you should see drop as. If you want to cancel the copy, you can just click cancel link creation. You can drop as a symbolic link, a junction, then in the case of a file, a hard link. I'll create a symbolic link. And just like that, I've got a symbolic link or a file. Pick link source, a drop as, hard link. Pluto Utility has a couple of options for setting the overlay icons for each of these types of links. Now, I've got a little icon here telling me that this is, in fact, a hard link. In addition, if you right click and go to properties of a file, you'll see a links properties tab, which will show you all the links associated with the file and the number of links that exists. This tool also supports smart copying, mirroring, in a form of incremental backup using hard links called DeLorean Copy. The website goes into exhausting, rather esoteric technical details about not just how to use this tool, but how symlinks, junction points, and hard link works in Windows. It's a must-have tool if you plan to dabble in creating these links in Windows.